Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to Spongebob Conspiracy number 3, The Mrs. Puff Theory by Alex Bale. Now, I have not seen this, but a ton of people have obviously been requesting this, and I watched the other two theories, 1 and 2, so I'm very intrigued. I've heard this is the best one. This one is insane. I've heard this is crazy, and it's all about Mrs. Puff and her backstory and something like that. So I am very intrigued. I, yeah, I'm intrigued. Uh, yeah, anyways, guys, we're in the description. Make subscribe to Alex Bale and sound subscription. Let's just get right into it. This is not Mrs. Puff. You may think she's just Ooh, a okay. living teacher, but you'd be very, very wrong. For years, she's been okay. running from her dark and mysterious past, but it's finally caught up to her. And behind it all is a mastermind who's been secretly controlling her life and psychologically torturing her. If you guys thought my last two theories Wait, were what? Going, get ready for my biggest conspiracy yet. This is the Mrs. Puff theory. Okay, I've... I gotta start off I'm interested. Saying, wow. The reaction to my last two SpongeBob theories has been insane. Have to say no! Have I have reaction. No! Squilliam, you lying, deceiving. Who is that handsome young devil? Oh, yeah. You guys are enjoying my ridiculously deep dive. That's cool. He's in it. I mean, I have to watch so much SpongeBob and read so much. Hey, yeah, that's actually cool. To these theories together. But it's worth it because the writers actually take the time to set these things up. Now, a lot of people have been asking, Alex, how do you come up with these crazy conspiracy theories? Well, I always start these theories by looking for the moments in the show that seem to be implying more than they're letting on. Like I've said before, Spongebob is a weird show with lots of abstract humor, but I can usually understand the intent the writers had behind a weird joke. But then there's stuff like this. I hope I still remember how to do this. Yeah. And it's so confusing and weird that it feels like the writers are trying to imply something beyond just weirdness for the sake of comedy. And nowhere in the show is there more of these moments than with Mrs. Puff. Oh, really? Once I started looking into it, it led me down the deepest rabbit hole I've ever seen from this show. So, I like that begin. you use that drawing. Okay, here we go. Mrs. Puff is a boating school teacher in Bikini Bottom. She's passed all of her students except for one, SpongeBob SquarePants. He's taken her driver's test hundreds of times and he always ends up failing it and causing destruction and chaos that usually ends up with Mrs. Puff going to jail, despite it not really being her fault. We also know that True. she was married, but her husband was killed by fishermen. That's my driving teacher. Oh yeah. Mrs. Puff. Oh, she's married. Oh no, Mr. Krabs, she's single. Then what happened to Mr. Mr. Puff? The lamp, yeah. She doesn't like to talk about it. Throughout the show, there are moments like this that seem to be hinting at her having a dark, mysterious past. And in season two, episode ten, no free. I guess, yeah. The biggest clue about who Mrs. Puff really is. After SpongeBob fails the driving test yet again, Mrs. Puff has just had it with him and ends up just giving up and giving him his license, even though he never really passed. Oh she yeah. Realizes that this is a horrible idea and he'll probably end up destroying the entire town. La, 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 oh yeah. La, 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 So much destruction. This reporter asks, why? Local consensus places the blame on this negligent, selfish driving instructor who... Remember this clip, because it's going to be very important later on. And then she says okay. this insanely revealing line. What have I done? Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. I'll have to move to a new city, start a new boating school with a new name. No, not again. No, not <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. So okay. Mrs. Puff was originally from a different town. All right, give him that. Boating school. Give him that. Yep, already. Her real name. There's something in her past that she ran away from. Now, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. referring to a new name for herself or for her boating school, but I do think she's talking about her own name because if she's trying to run away from <laughs> yeah. something in her past, she wouldn't start a new boating school with her real name in the title. Now, when she says True. again, I don't think she's just referring to starting a new life. Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. Not again. I think at her previous boating school, she had a terrible student just like SpongeBob, who she prematurely gave a license to, and it led to something so terrible happening that she had to run away and start a whole new life. In season three, episode five, okay. during time, we get a flashback to when she first opened up the school. Of my new boating 
leaving school, I pledge that as long as a student is willing to learn, I shall never give up. Hi, I'm SpongeBob SquarePants. With the opening of this new boating school, let's keep in mind that this is not her first boating school. Maybe the whole reason Yeah, I noticed that in her wording. Her second school is because she gave up on a student at her previous school. She doesn't that say led like, to yeah. Run away and start a new life. She's pledging to never make the same mistake again. Now let's skip ahead to one of the newer episodes. True. Season 12, episode 21, Lighthouse Louie, where Mrs. Puff has SpongeBob organize all the stuff she keeps in the school's lighthouse. There's lots of a interesting lot? things hidden in the background, but the first thing that caught my eye was this file labeled Mrs. Puff. It makes sense for a teacher References. to have files on all their students, but why would she have a file about herself? But let's remember, she's not Mrs. Puff. That's a fake identity she created. And I'm willing to bet all of her fake identification documents are in this file. Back in No Free Rides, she just gives Spongebob a license that she already had for him. So she clearly makes these licenses and would probably know how to make fake identifications. But that's not the only True. thing Mrs. Puff's past. That would make sense. There is something in here that directly confirms all of this. As Spongebob swallows all of Mrs. Puff's junk, we see something very interesting for only a few frames. Deranged boat teacher makes getaway. Ten seasons later, and the creators are still hiding stuff about Mrs. What? Puff in her old life. It might not look like it at first, but we actually get a ton of. Oh, what? Paper. They actually put that there? That's insane. That's insane. I, I actually have never seen Lighthouse Lou. I've never seen this episode because I, I don't really watch much of the more recent episodes. I, I'm only like a. You know, I like the older episodes. But yeah, I did not did not know they actually did that. That's actually interesting. They're doing that way a ton of seasons later. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. And it's actually cool. It's cool. That's actually cool. This is from the New Kelp Post, which tells us Mrs. Puff originally lived in New Kelp City. Then there's a caption that reads, mm. distracts authorities with balloon animals. And do you remember that clip from the beginning? I hope I still remember how to do this. What? Yeah. Yeah, if so that was a Mrs. gag. Puff makes a getaway or commits a what? Crime, she leaves behind a balloon animal to distract the police. I'm telling you guys, these writers don't just do stuff randomly. They have yeah, reasons what? for everything. And the most damning. Why would they put that there if that was a random joke? A picture of Mrs. Puff. Kind of a strange photo, right? We have seen this exact same photo of her before. In the episode boom, boom, No Free Rides, boom, 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 which she imagines boom, boom, what would happen if SpongeBob boom, 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 boom. got his license. Yeah. Local consensus places the blame on this negligent, selfish driving instructor. Oh, yeah. This means that this isn't just her imagination of what might happen. This is also her remembering what happened when she lived in New Kelp City and prematurely gave one of her students a license. And I'm willing to bet that the fish <laughs> reporting the news is the exact boom, same boom, boom, one boom. who reported about her in New Kelp City. Let me explain. We know from the episode, Whatever Happened to Spongebob, that reporters from the Bikini Bottom News can also work for the New Kelp City News. But the real reason I think this is because of his hair. In the entire show, we have never seen this fish reporter with hair before. Why would the creators go out of their way to add that detail? Because Mrs. Puff isn't imagining him as he looks now. She's remembering him from years ago when he used to have hair, when he reported about her in New Kelp City. Mrs. Puff has been Ooh. running from her past ever since. Ooh, and is now okay. her experience with an unteachable student Interesting. Bob, but reliving this, this is already insane to the point of complete insanity and trust me when I say that you have no idea how delusional she actually is part two another running gag throughout the series is Mrs. Puff's occasional nervous breakdowns or moments of insanity because of Spongebob and they get more severe as the show continues at first she did care for Spongebob but in the newer episodes she literally tries to kill SpongeBob oh yeah just to get him out of her life even Spongebob just walking up to her gives her severe PTSD. Hi, Mrs. Puff. <gasps> ah! Hit the brakes! Spongebob! Uh, watch the tree! Laugh! Wait, Mrs. Puff! We're not driving! But these mostly seem like just one-off moments. Yeah. For the most part, Mrs. Puff is still a functioning member of society, right? I'm going to show you that she's actually much, much more insane and delusional than you may think. And some okay. of the episodes she's in take place entirely in her own head. If we're talking about what? how she's in this puppet, there is no better place <laughs> to start what? than the time. Once again, SpongeBob fails the boating test. I'm sorry, what? Destruction and chaos, which leads to Mrs. Puff going to jail. SpongeBob keeps breaking into jail to try and bust her out, but Mrs. Puff actually prefers being in jail over teaching him. We actually get another interesting line about Mrs. Puff's past in this episode. Okay, 
You can do this, pup. You can get through this without losing your sanity. Oh, that's a road we don't want to go down again. So we know that Mrs. Puff again. Has sanity in the past. Probably she keeps saying again. Students. But it seems like she's recovered since then. Except in this episode, she has a complete mental breakdown. SpongeBob keeps appearing in impossible places until she gets thrown into solitary confinement, where each wall of the room transforms into a giant SpongeBob face. And then the episode ends in a way that's so weird and confusing that it rivals the infamous gorilla episode ending. As Mrs. Puff freaks out, she's suddenly transported back into the beginning of the episode when SpongeBob was taking the test. Except this time, SpongeBob gets arrested instead of her. did your time oh yeah what so what's really going on in this episode was the ending all in her head is mrs puff just caught in an endless loop i think this entire episode is inside of mrs puff's head and she's actually on the outside the whole time but she's been imagining herself inside of prison i can explain listen what? closely to what the police officer tells mrs puff why would you go to jail? You already did your time. Why would you go to jail? You yeah, that's interesting. And then revealing she's still in a prison uniform despite being on the outside. So this scene is obviously inside of her head, which means everything we see is symbolic. And if we can understand the yeah, story, yeah, true, we can understand what's really going on with Mrs. Puff. Notice how she's suddenly wearing a black and white striped prison uniform, even though the entire episode she's been wearing this orange e jumpsuit. Orange. Why would the creators go to the extra effort to draw a whole new prison uniform for her? Well. We've seen her wear this black and white prison uniform before. The very first time she went to prison, back in Season 1, Episode 7, Hall Monitor. So when the police officer says, you've already done your time, he's referring to the first time she went to jail. But why is she still wearing that uniform outside of prison? Well, she may have gotten out of jail, but she was by no means free. Having to teach Spongebob is a prison in itself. And she manifests oh, that by believing what? in jail and wearing a prison uniform despite being on the outside. This entire episode, every time Spongebob magically appears, is all inside of her head. She is completely delusional. And hints that she's experiencing these hallucinations don't stop there. Just six episodes what? later, she goes to a house party Spongebob throws. And while everyone is talking and having a good time, in the background we see she's literally sitting by herself talking to an ice sculpture of Spongebob. You can't tell me this isn't intentional. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Now, back in the what? episode of No Free Rides, there is a very strange picture inside of Mrs. Puff's home. Oh, it's a yeah! Of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff creating an infinite loop. This is something that has confused SpongeBob fans for years. But like everything in the show, there is a reason for it being there. One of the SpongeBob storyboard artists actually called it the biggest mystery in the entire show. If you think about it, this is just like the end of Doing Time, where she's stuck in an infinite loop of SpongeBob failing the driving test. Because it's all symbolic of what her life is. Sh True. The cycle of SpongeBob taking the test and failing, and no matter what she does to try and escape, she always ends up back in the same place at the end of the episode. So this picture is another symbolic manifestation of what she's feeling. We even see another one of these pictures all the way in season nine, episode five. What? This is something that the show is consistently. That's doing so interesting. The fact that this show is doing that seasons later as well just shows that they still are going strong with that idea. That is insane, and that is so cool. That is literally insane. Oh my god, that is insanity, but I love it. Unreliable narrator, and anything we see with her could potentially all be inside of her own head. In fact, I believe I found another episode that takes place inside of her head. In season nine, episode seventeen, SpongeBob, SpongeBob Long Pants. Pants. SpongeBob goes to. Oh, I remember this episode. I actually have seen this one. Gets his license, but as soon as he does, we briefly cut to Mrs. Puff waking up. You pass. I finally got my. Oh yeah, this is a gag. Lock your doors, bar your windows, it's the end of the world! Now, this seems like it's probably just a throwaway yeah, gag it's where gag. Mrs. Puff somehow senses that Spongebob got his license, and it causes her to wake up and freak out. You know, it's a good bit, it's funny, but I have a question. If the joke is that she's supposed to be waking up at the exact time Spongebob gets his license, how come she wakes up at night, night. and Spongebob clearly gets his license during the day? Because this entire episode actually takes place inside of Mrs. Puff's head. And this is the only part of the episode in the real world. I don't know what that was all about, but 
I'm glad it's over. But let me pause. She doesn't even I'm remember. Sure some of you are already wondering if this contradicts my previous SpongeBob video, the television theory. If you haven't watched that one, the gist of it is that the entire show is a documentary television show, and everything. Oh we see yeah, is it's it's a little bit. Drivers. And there's a ton of evidence to support it. I'm very proud of that video. You should definitely check it out. But if everything's supposed to be from a camera, then how are we seeing things from inside Mrs. Puff's head? In fact, how do we see dreams and flashbacks and thought bubbles? Well, I think the simple answer is that even though we view the show through an objective camera lens, the world itself still follows the rules of a cartoon. You can never tell another <laughs> living soul. Wait, wait, hold on! What's that? My pen is out of ink. Plankton! You'll never get me formula. Not even in a flashback. In the world of SpongeBob, you can imagine something and other people can still see, record, or interact with it because that's just how cartoons work. Back to the theory. We know that her mm, Okay, is I guess. Of delusion. But if you remember back to the Lighthouse episode, she's also become an extreme hoarder. And looking at her collection of junk is like a look directly into her mind. So there's gotta be something we can learn about her from it. Boom. There's a picture of her boyfriend, Mr. Krabs, the hall monitor belt she gives her students. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be a reference maker, though. SpongeBob's diary, a boating safety helmet. Wait, SpongeBob's diary? diary? Why does she have SpongeBob's diary? The last time we saw that, it was safely put away in SpongeBob's library. What's it doing in her lighthouse? I think it's a reference. Why does she have Squidward's painting? And a table from the Krusty Krab? And SpongeBob's bike? And Squidward's teddy bear? And the hair curlers Mr. Krabs had? And that statue of Squidward? And that diamond. I think the. Weren't the, weren't the hair curlers at. Yeah. Weren't the hair curlers originally uh mrs puffs though i feel like they were didn't didn't mr krabs in that episode basically steal it from her but then say that he borrowed it i think that's what that was in the original episode so i think it still was hers but I, to be fair this part of the video where it's like a ton of objects that could be kind of excused as as this is just references and yeah, like so far, I think the rest of it already is really solid. I, I think already. But I guess this bit is really, it's just like, eh, this could be references. Diamond ring? And that crown? And that bucket of radioactive waste? And that jellyfish sign? Oh my god. Mrs. Puff is a kleptomaniac. Mrs. Puff has been stealing from everyone. Oh, stealing, Bob. okay. I can even prove that her pet snail from season 3, episode 19 was stolen. My snail is up a tree. I've had her since I was a little girl. Isn't that? No! Hmm. You've had that snail since you've been a little girl, huh? Then how come that is the exact Next same, same snail, snail Squidward had four episodes ago in the Great Snail Race? I wouldn't let Snally here play with that mongrel mutt. She's a purebred. See? She even has her own papers. He even has her paperwork. Mrs. Puff clearly stole the snail from Squidward. But why the hell would Mrs. Puff steal all this other junk? What possible use could she have for any of it? We could find the answer to that question by looking at this green hat and this purple jacket. These were gifts Mr. Krabs bought her on their first date, but she ended up feeling uncomfortable receiving them and gave them back to him. I'm afraid I just don't feel comfortable accepting all these gifts. Except apparently she's not too uncomfortable to steal them back afterwards. So clearly Mrs. Puff oh, is yeah, stealing true. stuff because she wants to use it. She just steals for the thrill of it. Maybe stealing things is her way of coping with the insanity of her everyday life. And remember, this isn't the first time she's gone insane. You can get through this without losing your sanity. Oh, that's a road. Yeah, she says yeah. again. In fact, I have reason to believe that she started stealing things way back whenever she first went insane. I hope I still remember how to do this. I don't think she's just talking about remembering how to make balloon animals. She's probably also referring to remembering how to steal a boat. And if that's not enough for you, in a SpongeBob comic book, she actually admits that she used to rob banks and she wears the exact same ski mask. Oh, Mrs. what? Puff lives a completely delusional and miserable That was in a comic? She has to teach SpongeBob how to drive. It's led her to steal from the people she cares about and completely disassociate from reality. But that begs a very important question. If SpongeBob is causing her life to be so miserable, then why does she even keep teaching him? After all the destruction and pain he's true she'd totally be justified to expel him, right? I mean, she will literally try and kill him so she doesn't have to teach him, but for some reason she can't just expel him. It's almost like there's someone forcing her to teach SpongeBob. The master. Back to the episode No Free Ride. Interesting. After prematurely giving SpongeBob a license, she steals his boatmobile so he can't hurt anyone. In the end, this causes her to get arrested and go to jail, but then SpongeBob tells her this. And besides, the warden says she'll let you go early if you do her a favor. What's that? 
free driving lessons. So get to leave prison early if she gives free driving lessons. That seems like an oddly specific requirement. And that's not the only time this gets mentioned either. In season nine, episode five, bumper to bumper, we get this scene. If only SpongeBob could pass his boating test, he'd be out of my life once and for all. Unfortunately, I keep getting reminded of the consequences if I get too angry with the little nuisance. Consequences? Are you telling me that if she refuses to teach SpongeBob specifically, she'll be violating her parole and get sent back to jail? Why does the prison even care if Mrs. Pup teaches SpongeBob? Is it just part of some weird community service? What? Get really suspicious. Interesting. Episode, seven, episode five. Interesting. Once okay. Again, Mrs. Pup ends up in jail, but this time she's forced to go to a prison boating school. Oh wow. A driver's education class. Good day, class. Ah! Uh, I must be having a nightmare. What's he doing here? Dear Mrs. Pop, I'm following in your footsteps and got a job as a driver's ed teacher for the summer. Ah! Who in their right mind would hire SpongeBob to do this after he's literally destroyed the city countless times while driving? Is this just another one of Mrs. Puff's delusions? Or is the prison intentionally forcing her to be around SpongeBob just to torture her? I mean, look at the way the guard forces her to sit there and listen yeah, to- Yeah, what? Get me out of here! evil smile he has as he watches her endure this torture. There is something very strange going on with this prison. Then, in season 10, episode 8, The Getaway, okay. Mrs. Puff meets a criminal named Dorsal Dan and starts to get romantic feelings for him. This is also while she's still dating Mr. Krabs. Shame on you, Mrs. Puff. At the end of the episode, they both accidentally land in prison, and the warden puts him in solitary confinement. Warden, I found this one pulling up outside the prison. Dorsal Dan, a notorious getaway driver. Toss him in the clink. Tender boy. <laughs> In or out of jail, this prison will stop at nothing to make sure she is alone and miserable. But why? Who's behind all of this? Why would anyone care this much about torturing Mrs. Puff? Who's the mastermind pulling the strings? Okay. Well, maybe it has something to do with her old life in New Kelp City. Maybe she crossed someone and they've been plotting their revenge ever since. But I've looked in every single frame of New Kelp City, and there is nothing connecting it back to the prison. I've looked literally everywhere, and there's not a single person from oh, the city here we that go. has anything to do with Mrs. Puff. Except. Well, I mean, maybe except for the literal warden of the prison she's being kept in. He may be hiding slightly off screen, but that is clearly the same warden of the Bikini Bottom prison. And this isn't some random background character that the show reuses all the time, he is a very distinct character. You can call me out on the Squilliam video all you want, but not this time. But wait a second, wait a second. If the warden was originally from New Kelp City, then he'd probably know about Mrs. Puff's dark past and her true identity. So. Why hasn't he exposed her? He's just kept quiet about the fact yeah, that one true. of his is living a completely false identity. She'd probably even get more prison time when they find out who she really is, so why hasn't he said anything? This is where things get very interesting. So, we know Mrs. Puff prematurely gave a student at her original boating school a license, and that led to them causing chaos and destruction. Maybe this student accidentally did something terrible to the warden, and he's blamed Mrs. Puff ever since. Whatever happened was so terrible that it caused him to move to Bikini Bottom and get a job as the warden of the town's prison. And to his surprise, he finds out that one of his inmates is actually the person he blames for that terrible thing happening. This works out perfectly for him. He can finally get his revenge on Mrs. Puff by making her life miserable. All okay. All she has to do is reveal her dark secret, and she'll be stuck in jail for much longer. Except for one small issue with his plan. Mrs. Puff actually likes being in prison. One day down, 2,528 to go. Oh, that's just shy of four years without SpongeBob. I'm going to enjoy this. So, he comes up with a new plan. Keep Mrs. Puff's secret and let her out of prison early, but only under the condition that she has to teach SpongeBob. He's literally turning her normal life into a prison. And he makes sure going back to Okay, prison I feel like this SpongeBob part is a little bit of a stretch, but because he'll make sure that Spongebob is always not a bad way. idea. And he's not going to let her escape and start a new life like she did in New Kelp City. He makes sure to give her an ankle bracelet that doesn't let her leave Bikini Bottom. I can't even leave town without violating my parole. He is the mastermind who's been controlling everything this entire time. But guess what? 
his insidious plan doesn't even end there. This is not the first time we've seen the Warden character. We first see him in Season 4, Episode 2, Crabs vs. Plankton. In this episode, Plankton slips on some water in the Krusty Krab and decides to sue Mr. Krabs for everything he owns. And then guess who shows up out of nowhere and offers to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer? I really need oh, a yeah. lawyer. What? Hello, did somebody say lawyer? Richard A. Bottom feeder, attorney at law. I couldn't help but notice that despicable display. Richard A. Bottom feeder. The warden of the Bikini Bottom prison is also apparently a lawyer? That's kind of strange. Those both sound like major careers. You usually wouldn't imagine someone being both. Then he says he'll be Mr. Krabs' lawyer completely free of charge. So, uh, how much is this gonna cost me? Actually, I won't charge a dime unless we win. Well, that's awfully generous of you, Richard. He seems very confident that he can win the case, but right before he goes to court, he slips on some water and says SpongeBob will have to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer now. Oh, this is gonna be a slam <laughs> Oh, no! Mr. Krabs' lawyer, speak to me! Wrapped in pain, can't move. Looks like you're gonna have to handle this one, son. He tells SpongeBob that he has to represent Mr. Krabs, even though he himself called SpongeBob a liability. Actually, SpongeBob, we won't be needing any testimony from you. Why, you'd be more of a, uh... <laughs> of a liability than an asset. But it's okay, because apparently all Spongebob yeah, needs what? to is inside of Richard's briefcase. Everything you need to win uh, is in this here case. Ooh, really? Everything? Except when Spongebob gets to court, he realizes that Richard never gave him the combination to the case. It's, uh, all in here. Really? Yep, right in here. Is there a problem? Uh, your lawyer didn't give me the combination. Either Richard A. Bottom Feeder is the worst lawyer in history, or this is all part of his elaborate plan to ruin Mrs. Puff's life. Here's what I think happened. How? First, he finds out that Mr. Krabs is being sued, and he wants to ensure that Mr. Krabs loses the case because he wants to destroy any chance Mrs. Puff Yeah, Krabs true, I forgot. So he pretends to be a lawyer. Even I was wondering how, Mrs. like, Mr. Krabs, Krabs comes Krabs into this. Can't resist. He makes Mr. Krabs feel confident that they're gonna win the case, and then at the last second, he pretends to get into an accident so he can't represent Mr. Krabs. Instead of finding a real lawyer to replace him, he tells the most incompetent person for the job, SpongeBob, that he has to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer. And he gives him a case that allegedly has all the answers in it without actually giving SpongeBob the combination, setting him up for a total failure in court. Richard A. Bottom Feeder refuses to let anyone get close to Mrs. Puff, not Dorsal Dan and not Mr. Krabs. This guy has squillium levels of hate for Mrs. Puff. But why? What exactly did her previous yeah. student do that warrants this much torture? It can't be something as simple he as- He was the original student. Years. It has to be something like- I'm calling it. He was. Losing a loved one. He was. He was. Surprising. I'm calling it. Watch. The show gives us one last hint about who this might have been. All the pictures of Mrs. Puff's house are very- He unique. was the original suit. He's got photos of Mr. I'm Krabs, calling it. Pet Snail, and of course those infinitely looping photos that told us so much about her Yeah. Sides. But there is one more photo in this house that might be the key to this entire conspiracy. In season 12, episode 14, Plankton's Old Chum, we see a photo of someone we've never seen before on Mrs. Puff's wall. There's some surprising similarities between this character and Richard. The green color, the red bow tie, the overall fancy, serious appearance. Mm. <laughs> the same person, but maybe this is someone related to Richard. Like a father, a son, or a brother that Mrs. Puff's former student maybe. killed. And the reason she keeps a photo of him up is to have a permanent reminder to never make the same mistake of giving someone a license who doesn't deserve it. Mrs. Puff oh, okay. is a voting school teacher. Oh, I guess I was wrong. a terrible mistake that led to the loss of her business, identity, sanity, and any chance at finding happiness. I like to think that there used to be a time when she was happy, back when her husband was still alive. If only he was still around today, maybe she wouldn't have Yeah, to wait, what about that? Room. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed I guess that doesn't really come into the what theory I would say much. if I was done. Except yeah. her husband is still alive. Woo! Let's do this. Oh, nice Wii music. In the SpongeBob movie, SpongeBob and Patrick travel to a gift shop. Oh, yeah. City that's full of dead fish turned into knickknacks and ornaments. Except they end up setting off the smoke detector, which activates the sprinkler system and brings all the dead fish back to life, including a very familiar looking puffer fish hanging from the ceiling. Mr. Puff is alive. Well, wait a second. If he's alive and he escaped, then why hasn't he gone back to Mrs. Puff? 
why is she still alone? Because remember, she ran away from their home in New Kelp City and started a new identity. So sadly, Mr. Puff has no way of finding her. The tragedy of Mrs. Puff's story is that her happiness is just a city away, but she can never even leave town because that would violate her parole. Richard A. Bottom Feeder probably even knows her husband is alive and is making sure they're never reunited. As the name says, Richard really is a bottom, bottom feeder. feeder. This video took a ton of time and effort to do all the research for, so I really hope you guys enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, it seems like watching. it. But yeah, honestly, this theory was actually insane. Actually insane for a majority of it. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was crazy. I thought it was absolutely insane. There were some parts I felt like were a little bit of a stretch, and, you know, so there was that one part where it could have been references, and I do feel like the Richard A. Bottom Feeder thing, yeah, it's kind of a stretch because you really don't see him in New Kelp City or Kelp City or whatever. Uh, why did I say New Kelp City? What, was I thinking like New Dog City? <laughs> but uh, yeah, we really don't see him in Kelp City, so it's. You know, I feel like it's a little bit of a stretch, but it's not a bad idea. It does explain a few things. And to be fair, this this theory is really insane. I think the idea of it is great, and there are ton. There is a ton of evidence to prove that she, you know, she had a past life and she ran away from Kelp City and went to Bikini Bottom. So that's really interesting. Honestly, that is, that is so good. But yeah, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the like, and share my channel. See you next one. Bye.